All right, our next speaker is the urban design field librarian at the University of Michigan. Please welcome Annette Haynes. So I'm a librarian and recently I had a bunch of students over to my library to look at artist books. And as the students were sitting there, one of them got really excited and said, oh my gosh, this is the first time all semester I've got to look at something that isn't on a screen. So tonight I'm going to talk to you about artist books on a screen. This is not what they're about, right? So I'm going to basically set out this map for you, but you are going to have to seek out that treasure yourself. So there's three things that I want you to get out of what I'm going to talk about tonight. One is that you cannot judge an artist's book by its image, that you should go find some, seek some out, and find out what they're really about, and that maybe you should even make some. So what are artist books? Well, they're not art books or books about art, although they could be. There are a lot of different kinds, and they're kind of hard to pin down, but the basic idea is that they're books created by artists as works of art. Now, they're made out of anything you can think of. Paper, of course, but also wax, glass, metal, even dirt. Some pop up and some light up. Some reach from the floor to the ceiling, and others fit in the palm of your hand. Some argue politics, while others quietly break your heart. Some are rare, and some are free. And some make you cry out with delight, or in some cases, horror. What is that? Now they use the, the format of the book in a variety of ways. Some of them use a standard codex of a regular book, but others play off that tradition like this book, House of Cards, that invites the reader to assemble the pages in any way they wish. Other books look at other kinds of senses, like this book, a slices of pie that looks good enough to eat, right? It contains pie recipes and stories about pie. And there are actual edible books, and you can find them and actually eat them on Edible Book Day, which is celebrated annually every April 1st, April Fool's Day, no kidding. And if you're into edible books and recipes, you might be interested in Mike Bianco's work. He's a local artist. He took real cookbooks, sawed them up with a bandsaw, pickled them, and created an installation and a zine to document the affair. <laughs> now, as you can imagine, book artists come in all types, including musical hippies. This is Peter and Donna Thomas, and they traveled the U.S. in their gypsy wagon bookmobile. And when they came through Ann Arbor a couple years ago, I got to meet them, and uh, Peter pulled out a ukulele and started serenading me with this song about ukuleles and books. And to my surprise, when he finished, he popped open the ukulele to reveal this book hidden inside about ukuleles. This is another musical book. This is a book about Mayan folk tales. It's from Mexico, but you don't just read this book. You put on headphones and you put on a mask and you enter this different world and actually become someone else. Or maybe this book will stimulate your creep factor. It comes complete with its own hands and feet and it's a story about this witch who concocts the perfect potion to create this creature which end up being cockroaches. Some books stimulate more visceral responses. This is um, uh, a book by the Critical Art Ensemble. It's called Diseases of Consciousness. And it's filled with these made up but real sounding diseases like the overactive rational gland. Other <laughs> books are more about quiet, more internal emotions like sadness or reverence. This case is about joy. And this book by Paul Johnson is only four inches tall. In any case, these books are meant to be experienced in person using all of your senses. Showing them to you on a screen like this is a little like meeting your true love through an online dating service. They may look great here, but in person, ooh la la. So how can you meet some of these beauties in the flesh? Why in libraries, of course. We have a lot of really wonderful artist books at the University of Michigan libraries. We also have, you can find them in galleries like the WSG Gallery in Ann Arbor. We also have lots of great local talent, artists like Matt Schlein, Lynn Abadenka, Matt Monahan, Barbara Brown, Wesley Tanner, just to name a few. 
So dissolve this make you want to get out your waxed linen and your bone folder and start making them? Oh, you don't know how? Well, don't worry, there are classes. There are classes in Ann Arbor in Detroit, so I hope you will just join in the creativity and start making some artist books. Thank you.